This is Kinda version like these, 1.0. This was like our very first just starting to play with this shit, making a mess, but having a lot of fun while doing it, almost setting the garage on fire. Mm -hmm. We uh, had to, I'm sure we've told the story before, but like scrape on the floor, the resin off the floor with spoons because I didn't want my dad to see. We did it in yeah. his garage at the time. And so that was fun. This is fun to have. This is a little token of kind of where we started. Hey, what's going on? We got another episode of Chats with Max. This time it's just me and my girlfriend, Kim, over what's here. It? Kim Rosar on Instagram. Check it out. And a lot has happened since I last had her on the podcast. I'll link it somewhere up in this area. But, uh, man, you've grown from about forty or 50,000 from last time we talked to about 90,000 now Thank on Instagram you. in yeah. terms of followers. And I just kind of wanted to talk a little bit about... What's gone on since then in terms of your art shows, what we're looking at in the future with Mission Marisol, uh, maybe some things with our relationship. You guys want to get a little background <laughs> into that? <laughs> but yeah, I just wanted to kind of give an update with uh, Kim over here because I think what she's doing and how much she's grown over the last year has been crazy. You're at 91,000 followers on Instagram right now. How crazy is that to you? Yeah, about there. Um, I think it kind of was a blur around 70 80 and then when we got to 90 i said we're almost at 100 which i think are kind of the benchmarks but one thing i think is really notable is that the growth on instagram that's been cool but i think what's been a lot more substantial and more exciting to me mm -hmm. is how much we've grown i think as a business or how much i've developed as an artist and how i think Instagram used to be one of my main focuses and it still is very much a part of my brand and what I do and what I love now. But I think the numbers there, they just kind of came as a result of the other things that we've been doing, which I think has been really cool. So Instagram's grown maybe this much, but the business has grown so much more, which has been really awesome. Well, so what have you been doing outside of Instagram though? Yeah. That you're so, talking about? so outside of Instagram, I want to say the main thing that we focused on in 2019, because it is now freshly 2020, uh, was for me focusing focusing a lot on myself as an artist, uh, less as a businesswoman and more as a creative person. Uh, I had to have good sit downs kind of with my team, especially with my manager, Evan, and saying, you know, I need to do art and I need to start trusting you to do what you're good at um, and to help grow this brand. So that way I could focus on the craft, which is kind of the main thing of what I'm doing so practicing with new techniques um growing using new materials which has been really fun having really cool collaborations uh we collaborated with this really awesome videographer that one blonde kid Jeremiah and that video is going to be coming out really soon which I'm really oh, excited about yeah Troy Boy song Sheesh. yeah that which is super awesome which mm -hmm. high five on the recommendation was good what do you, oh for the song choice yeah I, I sent Max three and I said which one's your favorite and he said that one and that's the one that they picked as well so I'm really excited excited for that uh and a little behind the scenes for that i mean music choice when it comes to freelance stuff especially the stuff that's going to be aired on youtube or with paid promotional posts a lot of times people kind of air towards uh royalty free music but i think yeah. it's really cool that you guys are kind of not really caring about the monetization you're just going for the artistic vibe so you're choosing a song that maybe it'll get copyrighted and stricken but it's not that big of a deal like it's yeah. more all about the vibe of the video well i think and this is something that i think is also very sensitive to uh, as a creative but if there's one person because i wasn't sure how he was going to do it jeremiah his manager Ashley actually said uh reese said uh let me know three songs that you really really like Mm -hmm. And I said, any song? And he said, pretty much any song. He's like, I wouldn't go for one of the big A-list songs or something like that, but another song that you really resonate with as an artist yeah. and you would like to use. And I got excited about that because I really, really do believe, especially in the song that we're using, I love, and I love his music. Um, but also, like you were saying, I really don't care about the monetization on Instagram thing. I'm more for what makes this the most creative, uh, exciting thing, which is one of the reasons that I was excited to work with Jeremiah. Um, but yeah, so that's one exciting collaboration. I had a few other artist collaborations that I was really excited to start working with. Now, this past Christmas, we were blessed, so blessed to have so many uh, commissions. So I had a, how I make most of my money is through selling my large scale marbled fine art pieces. Mm -hmm. And the majority like these, of that. I said this is version like 1.0. This was like our very first just starting to play with this shit, making a mess, but having a lot of fun while doing it, almost setting the garage on fire. Mm -hmm. We uh, had to, I'm sure we've told the story before, but like scrape on the floor, the resin off the floor with spoons because I didn't want my dad to see. We did it in yeah. his garage at the time. And so that was fun. This is fun to have this as a little token of kind of where we started and, and where those, we're going. For those who are listening, 
only. It, there's a triptych of paintings right next to us and they're yeah. kind of blue they look like the ocean almost and it's like a blue marbled ocean if you look on it. max's chats with max youtube i believe you'll yeah. be able to see those in some of his interviews they're now in his room which i'm really excited about but so uh artist collaborations i had to put a lot of those on pause saying hey i really want to give 110 percent into these collaborations where i'm creating with another painter um i just didn't have the time to do it over the past, uh, I want to say like four months, just because we were booked with commissions, which is a wonderful thing to have. But now the dust has settled a little bit. And now I'm able to start focusing on what I want to do creatively and not just for money, for for my own creative purpose. And I got to say, going back to like how many commissions that you've had over this Christmas season, is that crazy to you to have that much demand for your work? Yeah. Like how, do, how does that feel? Well, I think what's also, and I was talking to Brian, the artist across me, which was really interesting. And it just shows because a lot, the majority of my sales come through Instagram and or word of mouth. So a customer, a client will either find me through Instagram or a friend recommended them because they themselves bought a painting. But what was really exciting for me was the fact that the orders from around the world we had orders from hong kong um just all over the world different parts of europe asia and having the funds and stressors of those you know we work really hard to make sure we get the best shippers so really affordable shipping prices but still high quality which is awesome and it's just very case by case different parts of the world have different vendors that we prefer to work with Mm -hmm. but we're sending like really large so six feet by four feet is just the painting and then on top of that we have to box it. So we have to bubble wrap the shit out of it, create custom boxes for it. Uh, me and my team laugh because we say we're professional boxers now because we'll just like drink wine, have yeah. beer and just like try and get it done. <laughs> Maybe be able to start your own art fulfillment company. Oh, the I, no, place. honestly, as fun as that is, it's a lot more fun making it than it is boxing it. But um, that's part just been Ro- something that's wild. Yeah, that could be part of Kim Rose Enterprises. <laughs> Kim Rose, yeah, maybe someday. I don't know. <laughs> We've gotten, I was, I was saying, it's funny, even in the past, I want to say like seven months, the pictures of our boxes, I don't know, maybe I'll even have some of how they used to be before we sent them out look like shit. They were different colors. They just did not look look cute and our boxes now they look sassy like we'll finish boxing and say damn that's a really good looking box it just like looks very (laughs) official (laughs) which i'm really excited about um but yeah and so something else that has been super cool is that on instagram it'll tell you where your followers are from throughout the world so it'll say 50 percent of my followers are within the united states Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. and then like an 20%, percent, you... uh, I'd say that's about accurate. Wow. Yeah. And then, and, and they like 20% is in Europe and then 20% is, it, and it'll break it down. And that percentage almost to the T is where my orders come from. So about 50% of my orders come from the United States. Mm-hmm. Um, like if it's 20%, uh, and I'll have to double check the numbers again, but it, it really follows that model, which I thought was really, really, uh, interesting to find out. Yeah. Um, one thing that is interesting as well is that I, Per, uh, most of my following on Instagram is female. I want to say it's about like 70 or 80%, but it's about 50-50 um, of male and female people that order pieces. Mm-hmm. So that's interesting. So I find it really interesting that your audience slash market is so diverse. Do you think it was mostly Instagram that created that international audience? No, or? I think it's the content that I created. I want to say about a year ago, I was hugely inspired by Australian fashion, art, and color palette. And I think because I started to pull inspiration from that those are the kind of people that resonated with Mm -hmm. that art and so that's what uh, the you know those people started to like it and Instagram Mm -hmm. maybe helped promote to that audience and stuff and I did a lot of collaborations with brands in different parts of the world so I think that kind of helped fuel that as well and then maybe a couple people shared pieces or posts that you have that had those kind of colors in it yeah yeah definitely gotten a lot of feature pages things like that and those are from wherever in the world and make friends with people from around the world which i think is really cool as well yeah but yeah damn when it comes to content too i mean how have you evolved between last time we spoke and now because i know now we're talking about tiktok as a big thing yeah so what's your mindset on that has it changed at all oh yeah definitely i mean i think uh, instagram for me always holds a special spot just because i think different channels have different things Things that people can connect with YouTube is video. Obviously, podcasting is sound. Mm-hmm. Um, Instagram is images. TikTok is more short form videos. Mm-hmm. Um, and for me, I always love images. I think that's where I uh, am strongest and I love. But I also love video as well. So some have translated into I have a couple YouTube videos, which we're working on getting more out. But a big thing for me, which I think you touched on, is TikTok. Now, I, like pretty much everyone else, shot on TikTok at first. So I was like, what is this? This is cringy. This is terrible. 
Well, and for the most part, well, my sister brought up a good point because I was telling her TikTok is, ugh, like saying, ugh, I gotta go on TikTok and stuff like that. Their stuff is so cringy because everyone's just doing voiceovers and dancing. So there's nothing, nothing good on here. But she told me, she says, Kim, well, most of the people that are on TikTok are a lot younger than you are. And she goes, what kind of content did you make when you were their age? It was pretty cringy too. Cringy content. From what, at the time, I thought it was the shit. I thought it was great. But looking back, and not to say that all um, young people create cringy content as well, because I think there's a lot of people that are very, very young and very exceedingly um that have exceeding knowledge of their craft but for the most part when you're younger you have less experience things like that so i think that kind of tends to translate in the general of what tiktok posts now my sister had me laughing for i want to say a solid hour showing me funny videos on tiktok which kind of opened my eyes to it but the main thing that i was excited about tiktok was i had a friend um who's an artist and she had maybe about like fifty thousand. Uh, i think her name is on andrea it starts with an a we'll we'll look it up after because i'd like to plug her in because she's doing awesome um but maybe like fifty thousand followers on instagram and she started posting on tiktok mm-hmm. now her type of content resonated with the tiktok audience better it was short they were tutorials they were colorful so she started posting on TikTok and started gaining a lot of traction. So I asked her about it. I said, okay, you're 40,000 followers on TikTok. How long did that take? Mm-hmm. She took her, uh, I don't know, say like four months, which if you look at that growth compared to Instagram, it's insane. Mm-hmm. And so I said, okay, um, let's do this. So I went to one of my team members, Jay. Uh, she's fantastic with captions. I said, okay, Jay, I'm going to send you all these videos that I think are going to do all right on TikTok. Um, I kind of broke it down. I was like, this is what hashtags are. Uh, fyp for you page is kind of like their one of their main hashtags too i was like find good hashtags put filters on and just have fun with the captions you want some kind of a caption that's going to either promote conversation in a good or in a bad way Mm -hmm. or ask a question um and let her do her thing and tiktok really took off i think we're at about fifty thousand followers right now as we speak i've been on it for i want to say maybe five months uh give or take i think that's around the timeline and we had a video that is at 1.8 million views and another one that's almost at a million views Mm -hmm. and what i noticed is when first off it started blowing up right away and me and jay were texting each other like well what's going on here why is it why is it growing so fast and we found out we had gotten on the for you page and a bunch of people just liked it so they kept promoting it and promoting it and it's a it's a fun video but i didn't think it was that insane it's of me just uh jamming to ariana grande's uh the seven ring song and just like painting and kind of having fun with it and jay had the best caption he said where my divas at but you also had the, the gold painting underneath i the- have the gold i'm creating this stunning gold painting i mean a lot of the videos are of me painting which I think-, I think is really cool but that video in particular just like really hit it i feel like a big factor of it though is like you know there's that glimmer of the gold the ariana grande like and, and tiktok is an app where people are consuming for the most part with audio on too oh, yeah. so all those factors i think hit a synergy so. right there and so what i told jay after that i said what we struck gold on here we need to try and recreate so Mm -hmm. after that i uh, sing while i create anyway so i just started to make sure that i was trying to record that more often when i was doing that so those videos do fairly well i have other time lapse videos that do very well but you figure out what videos do well on a platform and try to make more of those now my videos that don't do so well on tiktok but i really want to make sure they're still there are of me doing close-ups of my art pieces um, because it shows off the beauty of the art piece and not everyone on TikTok loves that, but some people do. And what's really interesting is I want to say uh, a couple months into TikTok, uh, we started receiving emails. My manager was letting me know we started receiving emails of people saying, hey, I found you on TikTok. Uh, what are the prices for your art? Which is just insane because it took forever for us to be able to get that on Instagram. So yeah. TikTok. You might shit on it, but you should probably get on it. And there's some really good stuff on there. If you look around. <laughs> I'm sure I'm like a lot of other people. I say I should get on it while I'm watching you blow up. So definitely need to work on that. Oh, I, I mean, we've been brainstorming with you trying to figure out because you kind of want to have a strategy with it. You want to make sure that there's something that is something that A, you enjoy, you can be consistent at and you offer value. I think as long as you're offering value in some way or another mm-hmm. on whatever platform, people will start to click on that for me i'm showing how my art is being made um i'm showing a lot of behind the scenes which i as an artist getting started would have really appreciated looking at and it's just fun too we're just yeah. having fun while we do it okay so tiktok 
I admit I've been behind on it. We're going to come up with a strategy for that. But like you said, I want to provide some uh, some value there. And also, I want to be having some fun with it. Exactly. So we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. However, back to your stuff. Your strategy with social, super interesting. I think a lot of people could take some notes from that. When it comes to your strategy in the real world, I'm talking galleries and your different marketing channels in the real world. What's going on with that lately? Yeah, so... Something that I've been learning more and more of in the past year, and again, I want to say I'm not an expert. I didn't go to art school. I didn't. um, I'm still now starting to learn and appreciate how traditionally artists have come up. Um, I do know important things that I've been talking about before, and especially I'll get a lot of people that are just getting started as artists and feel like they're trying to deal with the impossible because they're not in galleries, they're not being represented, they're not doing any of these things that they feel that they wish they could, and there's a very high high barrier to entry to get into these special type of I want to say like exclusive galleries or clubs and Mm -hmm. things like that and that's the thing social media has completely radicalized and changed all of that I up into the past uh, I want to say three months three yeah three months ago I worked with my first gallery Mm -hmm. Um, before that it was all purely social media and I didn't have representation I wasn't with an agency I wasn't doing anything eventually the volume of emails became so much that I brought on my friend Evan as a manager but that was still internal it wasn't like we were out seeking any type of representation so this was all us but this wasn't a whole bunch of emails from galleries either right no 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 these aren't from galleries that play a huge part in you getting into your first gallery no that was actually me which I will talk about but um, that's that's how we started growing so we were getting I from social media Evan was helping me sift through because we get a lot of emails and some of them are kind of bullshit some of them are good some of them are collaborations some of them are people asking advice like his what he does is he sifts through what's good and what's not and if it's good he'll send it my way uh, as in if it's money or if it's someone that says has a really beautiful story or something Mm -hmm. like that about the art in terms of messages too I think we got to put a public stop to this People should not be asking you exactly what ingredients oh or materials you use or your, can I or ask, hey, can you teach me the exact method that you use to create a piece like this? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like and I under like I respect I want to say maybe the balls being able to yeah. ask a, um, an artist what their secret sauce is. But it's kind of like Jake was saying. So Jake is the founder of Move In Watches, which is a very successful watch company. He said he would get DMs from people saying, hey can you show me how to build a watch company? And he goes, he goes literally ask anything else. Show me how to start like a shoe company or something. He goes, but the fact that these people are like, Hey, can I like, can you teach me how to compete with you? Exactly. And I I get the art world's a little different because I do share a lot about my art to other artists. And I've had a lot of other wonderful artists share a lot about their techniques with me. So I think to a certain extent, the basic levels I'm very open about. Mm -hmm. I use inks, I use resin, I make my own canvases, things like that. Now, the very specific technicalities. A, I feel like if I were to show someone exactly how to do it, they still couldn't replicate it because a lot of it is just your muscles have to work in a certain way to do it. But B, I've worked years to develop some of these techniques. And the fact that someone says like, hey, can you show me exactly what you do? It's just, it's not fair for someone to feel entitled for me to tell them that. So You can leave them generally how to do oh, something, yeah. but it's the thing that these people ask exactly how to make exactly oh, yeah. what and you're I doing. And I think what we do in those is, A, I never discourage people from asking questions and experimenting with new things. So usually what we say to that is, hey, um, a lot of the things we uh, do not disclose about the specifics, but what I do share is on my YouTube. So my YouTube for me is the platform that I and brainstorming and trying to get that to be the platform that I share the how to's of what I do share and or workshops like the workshop that we did in Miami. Mm -hmm. Um, That's more hands on. Uh, Obviously, those cost money, though. So for free uh, YouTube. And then if you're willing to pay and get more and more insight, those are the workshops. Um, And if you're wanting to get as close as you possibly can be an intern for me, that's basically what the internship is. It's as close as you can get. You're literally working with me day in, day out, having fun, sipping 
trauma and stuff like that. But Mm -hmm. I think those are the levels of it. So what we usually say to people like that is just, um, hey, what we do share is on our YouTube and please subscribe if you found any of our videos helpful. We have a new awesome video coming out soon. Uh, 2020, one of my goals is to do more collaborations with videographers showing what we do in the studio. So that way people from all over the world, even if you're not here, you can't see it, you can still experience it. To some cool music too. Yes, definitely. Hit it right on. Um, But yeah, so to some cool music. Um, But speaking of questions, we did ask on my Instagram story if any of you guys did have some questions. So Max is going to be reading some of those to me. Some of you guys had incredibly beautiful, wonderful questions. Um, Once again, like we just said, some of the technicalities I cannot disclose. However, I do say experiment as much as you can. Save every penny. Um, put that towards art supplies ask your parents for Christmas for your birthday for art supplies just experiment and find what works best for you that's how you develop your style as an artist too that's also how you uh, stray away from trying to copy somebody else because at the end of the day you copy you're just fooling yourself you know like you, you gotta have some of your own original inspiration so I do want to get back into some of the gallery stuff and talk about the process of the experience of getting your first gallery and what that did for your business. But let's hit those user questions and we'll hop back into that. Okay, Okay, so first question, how do you prep your surface? Is it just plain wood or paper? So that kind of strays into the non-disclosure area. Um, What I will say though, is that uh, we use normal paints a lot when prepping. So spray paints or acrylic paints. Um, And we make our own canvases that do not dip. So if you're using something like I am resin, you want something like an MDF board that does not dip or doesn't give under the weight of the paint. Mm -hmm. Um, That's about as much as I can say about that. On to the next one. Studio (laughs) underscore porn. Hey, what's a usual day like from beginning to end? That is so sporadic. It's definitely not as sexy as you would think. (laughs) No, I think that's a really good question. Um, I think something I used to beat myself up about, especially since I would hear a lot of entrepreneurs saying, you wake up early, you stick to a strict schedule every day. And some, which to a certain extent, yes, I agree. Um, But also me, myself, every person needs to find what works best for them. I myself am a late night person. I usually go to bed around maybe 2, 3 a.m., something like that. And I got to say, it's a little detrimental to our relationship because i'm the opposite of <laughs> well max wakes up super early i do but- video for morning radio so that's just like complete opposite but we make it work yeah. we make it work and i am working on trying to get up um like on the weekend stuff like that when we do spend time together but anyway like in general you're kind of going to bed earlier now i trying am to work on that i am and i have been which i really appreciate so that relationship 101 make an effort kind of ish well what's the usual day like so let's the usual go, like- day i will wake up <laughs> probably around 10 um and i'm trying to get up earlier than that but usually around 10 i'll have my morning coffee which uh i live for coffee coffee is one of the most important starts Mm -hmm. to my day and then what and then um food uh on a good day i'll head into the studio pretty soon after i wake up and what i used to do whenever i did go to the gym maybe like I'm being generous, like three times a week or something like that. I would try and go in the morning and then to the studio after that. Mm -hmm. What I've been doing now and I think I enjoy more is just going to the gym later on in the day. So that way when I'm feeling most crisp, um, when I have a lot of mental power from my coffee, I'm going into the studio. Mm -hmm. So I'll drive into the studio. That's about 10 minutes away from where I live um and just get to it so in the mornings i will try to do the tedious stuff so be that emails um stuff for the website things like that where it takes brain powers like curriculum things like that for me and for the team and then in the afternoon is usually where i get a little more creative um and especially late at night which i've really really enjoyed there's an artist right across from me and he like me and the other artists in the area will stay up late and so we'll just be like sipping on wine blast in music painting which is just fantastic um so that is a general loose structure having said that every day is different um and so i just kind of what i do what works best for me and i know we've worked for a team we use the software called trello which actually evan found um 
It's a software for growing businesses that helps you put a to-do list for everybody on the team. So that way we can see what everyone's doing. So I can say, okay, like, Jay, you need to put one post a day on TikTok or something mm-hmm. like that. Or like, Kaylin, look at the prints, things like that. Evan, get to the emails, things like that. Yeah. And for myself as well. But what works best for me still is just old-fashioned Google Docs. I'll put what I need to do today. And I'll check them off. So I'll say, like, check my emails, text this person back, uh, mm-hmm. call this person, things like that for the morning and then the evening. Just have fun and paint, things like that. Mm. But, yeah. All right. Well, next question by Baishka Hizart. <laughs> Probably butchered that. I apologize. <laughs> but maybe we'll put your question up here as a consolation to that. <laughs> so how do I get clients to sell my artwork? Mm-hmm. Any tips from the boss lady? Um. Okay. So. The boss lady. Ayo. Um, I think the best way to start off getting sales like i've been saying is through instagram um just grow your brand don't try and hammer sales on people all the time because people tend to stray away from that Mm -hmm. sales come kind of as an afterthought you want to lure people in by having beautiful content and sharing about that sharing about your process sharing about the fun interacting with other people um you're talking so that way, mostly focused on social. on social on social media um but another way depending on what you sell if you sell something that's maybe like 10 to 50 dollars like a little bit of a lower price go to your local shops and say like hey and i know friends who have done this and have worked out really well i used to do this at coffee shop when i was selling lower ticket items too like or, or more affordable items um, say, hey, can I sell my stuff in your shop? Can I have a pop-up? Can I leave it here? Uh, can I give Coffee you a percentage? Shops too. Coffee shops, like uh, I wouldn't, I, I'd say stray away from a Starbucks or Starbucks or a coffee bean, like a big thing, but more of a mom pa shop. If any of your friends own a shop, but there's a lot of independent coffee shops in all cities. Yeah, stuff like that. Um, Etsy.com is huge. Uh, Redbubble.com is huge. Society Six. These are all websites that you can help to start selling your artwork. That's what I started on. Eventually, when it started taking off. Um, I just brought everything to my own website, but I started on websites like that. So that's a good way to get started. Next one, Miss Alina Pack. Mm-hmm. Where can I watch your videos and podcasts? Ayo, and Max. Well, where, <laughs> what's your YouTube channel first? Uh, my YouTube. Uh, if you, <laughs> <laughs> why do you cringe? <laughs> she I has forget. a video that has like two hundred thousand views, and she had like no subscribers when the, she first put that out. Well, to be fair, I really pushed hard for that though. You did. I had you a used lot a lot of, of your Instagram, Instagram followers, followers and I said, please, guys, please subscribe, and thank you guys for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, you're dead to me. Mm-hmm. I'm just kidding. No, but please subscribe because we will actually. I'm really trying to put more videos out there, and I would love for you guys to see them. Part of the strategy behind that too, you did shout outs for shout outs with big pages and you had them swipe oh, yeah. up to your new oh, YouTube video, right? I, you got, I got super smart. There are some people that I know that they were friends on Instagram. They have big YouTube channels and I'm bigger on Instagram than they are. And I said, hey, let's do a shout out for shout out or share for share, if you will. I will shout out your Instagram or your YouTube with a swipe up link. And if you do the same thing for me. And that actually helped a lot because some of these um, friends that had a lot of YouTube subscribers Um, that followed them on YouTube on Instagram they were exposed to my YouTube and then they followed my YouTube so just think outside the box a little bit like that definitely but um did a lot of that so if you google Kim Rose Art YouTube we'll start wrapping it up um it'll pop up but I believe it's just Kim Rose Art or Kim.Rose.Art on YouTube Uh uh-huh on YouTube and then for our podcast slash Uh videos it's at chats with Max Uh on YouTube and on Instagram check it out Mm -hmm. and stay posted and subscribe please (laughs) And even leave a review on the Apple Podcast if you feel nice. (laughs) Hell yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Anyways, okay. Let's go on to, let's say, two more. Okay. Uh, Okay. All right. So let's just jump into a lightning round and then we'll close out with a couple other questions. Okay. All right. So Art by Nars. How did you find the perfect art studio? Can you describe the challenge of finding a studio in LA? That's one of the better questions that I've, uh, I remember. I saw that one and I really like that. Good question. Um, it was really hard at first to try and find a studio in Los Angeles because there are no websites. I know different parts in Europe. It's a lot easier. But I asked uh, around and Craigslist is actually one of the best ways to find an art studio. Um, you kind of have to keep checking on it. There's a lot of trash on craigslist the first studio we visited i almost cried because it was really expensive and really ugly and really smelly and i thought this is what a studio is but then i found my studio and i couldn't have been happier that day i decided i said this is it this is where i'm staying so um keep checking on craigslist that's a really good way uh just check 
I don't want to say every day for a while, just till you find one that you really like and go check them out, you know? So it is a struggle and it doesn't get any easier. You just got to put that work in. You got to put that work in, know what your budget is too, and, and be realistic too, because certain areas are more expensive. Um, if you don't have the budget for it right away, get a shared studio. Mm-hmm. That's actually what I originally signed up for. I got lucky. The girl that I was supposed to share the studio with is a new mommy, so she just never came in. But, um, you know, get a shared studio, share with one or a couple other people if you really need to. Do what you can just to get started and to have your creative space. It was one of the best decisions I ever made, honestly. If you have the money, I say go for it. Definitely. How do you keep the resin layers dust free while they're drying? I don't think that's an NDA statement. <laughs> NDA. Is it? Um, I don't know. I think, and this is one of those things that other artists have been so gracious in sharing some of their techniques with me. So I will share some of the techniques that has worked. Um, you. One of the reasons that I got my own studio is because people have dust and my housemates when I would before I had a studio I would create at home in the kitchen or in our extra living room area and they would look at the pieces be like oh that's cute and I would tell them to get the fuck away because people have dust so you want to have a spot where there's no traffic an enclosed area preferably get an air purifier I went on amazon.com got an air purifier um you uh, get a popsicle stick and pick the little dust buddies out as they come on because there will be dust buddies on um but do that be as attentive to that as you can Mm -hmm. if you can have a friend or assistant uh, that's one of the main reasons that I have one or two assistants at a time help me but you don't need to have have your drag your sister into it if you have one like get somebody like i'll buy you coffee or something like that if it's something that you want to make happen and you need someone else to be there with you if it's a bigger piece then do that and then cover it so if you have a box if it's a smaller piece cover it and it'll stay like that resin's not like paint it doesn't dry with air it's a chemical reaction so even in an enclosed area it will still cure Mm. but yeah those are some tips (laughs) all right buy underscore mrk where do you get inspiration from or does it just pop into your head i'm inspired by you Oh, that's really sweet. A, B, um, the same way that they are. I'll find other pages or things that inspire me. Uh, one thing that I've been finding a lot of inspiration from is just looking at interior design. Uh, sorry, not interior design, architecture. Um, so specifically, I think the way that some buildings are just created as pure art and stunning so i will look at a building mostly mansions mostly like very gaudy places and say what kind of art does that place demand mm-hmm. like what would complete this in a beautiful way and then that's where i that's where i came up with my diosa piece there was this beautiful dark room and i said i i want a beautiful light minimal piece to complete it and so that's where i came up with that so um interior design or sorry uh, architecture um i'll i'll get color palette inspirations um so a lot of times like we were lucky enough to go to cancun the water was stunning and it was crystal and it was clear a lot of inspiration from that um but everyone will have different things that inspire them sometimes i get in creative ruts so just look at as many different things as you can to inspire you save them somewhere save them in a folder whatever Mm -hmm. um go to sleep, think about it. The next morning, your brain will do some thinking for you. So that way, uh, uh, you don't, don't feel so much pressure. The more pressure you put on yourself, sometimes it'll have an opposite effect. It's supposed to be fun. So try and have fun with it. You know, I love that. Mm. All right, let's for sure jump into a real lighting round. I'm going to give you 10 seconds per question to answer. And then we're going to finish up here. Okay. (laughs) Love it. All right. So Deborah asks, Mm -hmm. who's your favorite artist? Go. Uh, Basquiat next. Oh, wow. <laughs> Beach up. Lucre Maglier just sent a smiley face. Oh, smiley face back. <laughs> um, Emma Barral, do you have a playlist at all? Uh, so I'm weird and I use Pandora instead of Spotify, but I love it. So Pandora, Aliana Baraz uh, as a station, Doja Cat as a station, um odessa as a station start off with that it'll have cool stuff for you next one federico pagotto did you study art i did um kind of a trick question so i majored in business i minored in art just because i thought it was fun did i learn a lot from that not really did i have fun with it and realize i wanted to make a career out of it yes harry warfell Mm -hmm. what's your spotify rap 2019 info she doesn't listen to spotify she only does pandora so she's one of the few sorry (laughs) uh Tamin Gentropi, how slash where did you get your big break? 
There wasn't a big break. It's been a steady incline and it's been a lot of hard work. So don't expect a big break. If you get one, good for you. All right. Uh, someone asked for a complete tutorial of your art, but we already said that YouTube. you don't really do that. Check but she YouTube. has a light tutorial on YouTube at Kim Rose Art on YouTube, right? Uh, yes. All right. Uh, next one. <laughs> 85. <laughs> what? <laughs> 8586. You paying your rent? <laughs> <laughs> so, That's an inside joke. <laughs> 8586 is one of my neighbors. He has an awesome... You should check out his shop. He has an awesome shop. Um, he's great. <laughs> okay, someone with a bunch of letters as their username said, do you produce t-shirts again yes yeah, so that's a really interesting question stay tuned for this upcoming year don't worry we got you <laughs> chloe new vine kim can you give me art lessons um maybe we will have a workshop coming up soon um i'd say apply for the internship if you live nearby sunshine 101 how much does one painting cost what's the price range so that is a, a intricate question. Um, I want to say a good ballpark. Excuse me. And then you can email hi at kimroseart.com for serious inquiries. Um, anywhere from, I want to say, three to $30,000 right now. And it's still going up. So invest now while you can is oh, what I'm saying. <laughs> There's one that's in a different language. So just so you know, you have people who have different languages that are submitting questions thanks so shout for out submitting to in your language that's cool nathaniel j wilson how did you get into art how old are you so i am oh, 25 i got into art i've always loved it um and then did, when i started making money off it realized that this is what i wanted to do so yeah let me really quick since okay where do you buy uh i'm just doing a couple that i think really really stand out to me uh, where do you buy your clothes? Honestly, Fashion Nova. Not sponsored, by the way, but shout out to Fashion Nova. If you're trying to sponsor a podcast, holla at your boy. And oh, girl, my right? gosh. Way to get that plug in, though. <laughs> um, let's see. Will you mentor me? Dahlia Q9. Do you live here? Apply to the internship? Question mark. And or to work with us in Mission Marisol. I think we touched upon most of the big ones. If we missed your question, guys, I'm so sorry. We did get a lot. If and they missed do your question. We can include it in another podcast and, in the future. There can always be another episode. Definitely. And also, these really do mean the world to me. Um, the fact that my art does... Uh, impact or inspire some of you guys that really really genuinely does mean a lot so even though we can't touch upon all of them over here i do see you um and i thank you for that but yeah so any other questions well so before we close out i wanted to touch a little bit more on your experience with your first gallery yeah how that happened uh, what was the ROI on it up to this point? And yeah. what do you see in the future with galleries? Yeah, definitely. So I think for me personally, galleries is like a long term strategy. It's not an instant gratification because let's be honest, galleries take a huge percentage of what the sales are. And up to this point, we've been spoiled. I've been sharing it with me and my manager, Evan, and then delegating the rest out By to direct my team. sales through Instagram. By direct too. sales through Instagram. But I think for what I specifically want to be doing, I want to create a legacy and I want to be one of the best big biggest uh, artists of this generation. And so I think coming with that is partnering with larger um, galleries that have been doing what they've been doing and have so much knowledge in the art world and have connections and things like that. So that's why I'm starting to dip my toes into that. I'm wanting to work with the right ones. Um, the gallery that we worked with uh, is the William Carr Gallery. Uh, shout out to them. Um, they're not on social that much, which is actually, I think I'm going to see if I can kind of help them out a little bit with mm -hmm. that on, but they've done a lot of things very traditionally and very beautifully. I couldn't have struck at a better time. I, I how I got it also, uh, I just walked in, which is the thing that you shouldn't do. I asked for the art. Shouldn't do. You shouldn't. Well, mm, uh, learning more what I've learned now, certain places you just really, I, I don't know. I don't, mm, I don't know. You're There's still, no way you shouldn't, shouldn't do. Honestly, honestly. break the rules. Cause remember that one artist we heard about at Maddox Gallery, that literally vandalized the gallery that he's a part of oh People yeah do crazy things and it works out a lot that's of time. true that's true i think sometimes i let the voices of people trying to mentor me get into my head but you know what do you and do what i did i just went into the gallery asked for the curator's uh information i was going back to vegas because this is in vegas uh, a couple months later so we scheduled to meet up with him. We started talking about charity. Uh, we were talking about Mission Marisol. He is on the chair at St. Jude. So we got to talking about that, which was wonderful. And he said, you know what? Let's have a show together. 
if it goes well and if I like your art, we'll keep working with you. And it went well. Um, we have a beautiful relationship. And I struck that at a wonderful time because they were in the Grand Canal shop, so which is a luxury shopping area, central. But they opened up a new gallery in the shops at Crystals, which is one of the only luxury only shopping central so they got louis vuitton gucci prada every designer brand name is in there and they are the only art gallery over there so i couldn't have been more blessed in the timing with that um and have very exciting things in the future to come with that gallery mm -hmm. for me i think my strategy is work with a few galleries around the world that i really really believe in and are very high end mm -hmm. um again that has to be a two-way street they need to like me i need to like exactly them. and i would exactly. say the ROI that I've seen thus far with you being in a gallery is just having another sales channel to funnel yeah. out your name and show off your work. And it's exactly. really been cool to see. And right now I'm in a spot because I'm still really young and new. I'm an emerging artist, whatever that means. Um, and I'm trying to build my name up. Um, I'm trying to build a reputation for my art and for what I'm doing. And with that is collaboration and so i'm really excited it's stressful often and i think i made a post about this yesterday even how it's so stressful because you don't know exactly what the future is um or but how to I, get there or how to get there but i have always had certainty in myself and in my work ethic and in my art um i i full-heartedly believe in my art and in its ability to change different aspects of the world which i'm excited about and i know that other people will come alongside and help and i'll be able to help them as well so i'm excited for the future i'm really excited me too a little background on our relationship before we go because i know you know some people might not have heard the previous episode or anything like that kim and i we've been dating for almost four years now oh, we, whoa whoa almost four. Oh, sorry sorry over four years now wow it's that really flies when you're having time, fun. Well, time has flown i'll tell you that we met in a private school azusa pacific university shout out to them mm -hmm. we specifically got to know each other when we were in a business competition talk about that a little bit zoo against ventures. each other yeah so that was kind of like shark tank style yeah and how did we meet through that um well i mean because our school we kind of knew of each other you were dating someone at the time i was dating someone at the time when we first met blah 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 um we had the zoo ventures which is kind of like shark tank if you watch it um, if not, you should look it up. They're super great. Um, but it's a little more guided. So they don't just throw you out in front of the investors and you are pitching for real money, but it's like they guide you. They give you lectures. They're like, here's how to have an idea. Here's how to pitch stuff like that. So neither of us won, but yeah. I think we're the real winners. You know what I'm saying? I, d I, <laughs> I would agree. We walked away with it. With yeah. The relationship. Yeah. It was cheesy, but. Yeah. yeah, it's been a little over four years now, yeah. and uh, it's been going strong. Any notes to anyone? I would say do not look at – because a lot of people have messaged me or commented on things and been like goals or, oh, like dream relationship or whatever. And I'm not even trying to be cocky. It just happens on Instagram. And the one thing I would say with you guys seeing our, our relationship unfold is it's not perfect every day. We do oh, fight. Yeah. Uh, I, I just saw Riley Peak, the person who runs a – meme page called bitc.h it's great you it's hilarious it <laughs> go check it out i'll shout her out right here yeah but i just saw her say that you know people were asking about her relationship with her boyfriend she's been with her boyfriend for a long time yeah and she said outright that they fight almost every day but they get was, over it mm -hmm. and they have little fights that's the most important thing and even like ichi our friend um was asking me he goes do you fight with max and i said i fight with max every day but i think fighting <laughs> fighting isn't unhealthy i think it's a way of you saying i have an opinion you have an opinion sometimes those opinions differ the most important thing is if and how you make up so it's about working on sometimes i'm wrong most of the times he's wrong but <laughs> it's just working on communicating working through that i think is the biggest thing and yeah no relationship's perfect um i think there are perfect moments in relationships which i really love and yeah but yeah and i don't know anything else you want to add on to that i don't think so i think you said it really well yeah but that's been another episode of chats with max you guys please subscribe Please follow along. Even leave us a review on That's the Apple awesome. podcast app. I would love that. Five yeah. stars if you can. and Ten we'll stars if you can. <laughs> ten stars if you can. And we'll see you next week. We got a lot of awesome guests coming up. So make sure to keep up with the podcast. Keep up with the YouTube channel. Subscribe. Follow Kim Rose here. Hey She's yo. killing it with the art game. Soon to hit 100K, uh, 100K followers. Tell your friends. Yeah. So we're super excited for that. And we'll see you next week. All right. Peace. Bye. Bye.